I want to start off this review by mentioning the Nexus 4 and the Nexus 6, two smartphones that I truly loved and that I reference in any discussion regarding Google Stock OS. So needless to say, when I started using the Google Pixel 2 XL, I was constantly looking back and comparing to those legends in the Android world. Hey guys, my name is Ryan Thomas with Failtech and this is why the Google Pixel 2 XL is one of my favourite smartphones of all time. As weird as it sounds, I want to talk about the unfortunate flaws of the Google Pixel 2 XL to start with. First up are the phantom vibrations, which every so often, sometimes as frequently as two to three times per minute, I'd get a quick double buzz from the phone as if to show a notification, when actually there would be no notification there, I would go into the device, check the notification log, and there'd be nothing there. This is something that happens on very few devices, but unfortunately I was an unlucky suspect. So after digging around the OS for just a few days, I found a fix. Hold down the home screen to bring up widgets find the setting shortcut and drag it to your home screen. Then select notification log and click on said log and you'll see loads of image downloads, or in my case you would anyway. So find the app corresponding to the image downloads, in this case the download manager, and turn off notifications for it. Upside, no more phantom buzzes. Downside, no more notifications for the download manager. Again, it's worth mentioning that very, very few devices have this, it's just this one does. Also, my unit seemed to have this strange under rear glass bubbling, a symptom of poor back glass reassembly, as if someone smashed it and replaced it themselves. Not an issue on most, but it's just something I want to address in case all of you are thinking, wow, will my Pixel 2 XL do that? No, it's just a, a feature of a used smartphone. And the other issue that I found really annoying, and this is to do with POLED, is when on the lowest brightness on your smartphone, and this is kind of more applicable if you're in bed kind of reading through things, on black images or dark images where there's high contrast between light and dark, when you scroll, there'll be some weird kind of artifacting. And I'm not sure what exactly this is, but I'm pretty sure this is a part of PO LED. So it's kind of something that can happen on any PO LED panel and it only happens on the lowest brightness setting. Anything from like 10% up seems to be just fine. Because I consume a lot of memes in bed, like I'll just like go through imager and stuff. Because I'm on the lowest brightness setting, I'm kind of scrolling and I found this issue. Because it happens to me so often, I thought it would be worth mentioning. So with those out of the way, I actually want to contrast with the things I absolutely love about this phone. That stunning design. You can call it as thick or as cheap as you like. In my opinion, very, very few phones compete with this design, even after one year. Whilst I can certainly admire the very handsome Black 2XL, do check out this video by my buddy Josh at 91 Tech, by the way. The black and white Stormtrooper Panda Tuxedo version that I have looks so, so good and that neon power button accent just makes the whole phone stand out even more. On the back, that shiny Google logo, fingerprint scanner and camera placements are all perfect for me and make the phone stand out from the iPhone X-esque camera bump ridden backs that I've seen on so many different smartphones. And look at that attention to detail, a chamfered volume rocker. In fact, as much as I prefer the volume rocker to be above the power button, I didn't find the solution all too bad since the tactile click was satisfying enough to make it worth it for me. More on ergonomics in just a second. That white lip around the front display just looks poppy and contrasty and rounds off a truly iconic design in my opinion. The way the phone feels in the hand is really good, if a little too big for my hands. Though what am I talking about? I love the Nexus 6 and that thing was massive. The way that the somehow grippy flat back and subtly rounded edges transition into an excellently curved screen is something that many larger Google phones in years past have struggled with and the 2XL just perfects it. Okay, fine. I can't say that I didn't have to reach a little bit to get to the fingerprint scanner on the back, and this, in a lot of cases, is a two-handed phone for me. But the IP67 rated chassis feels and looks unique, and I want to see more of that. Too many phones have that glass sandwich design these days. What isn't the same, though, is the front glass. The edge-curved Gorilla Glass 5 above the display isn't the most wildly striking in the world, and the bezels aren't Mi Mix-esque, but I find that the slightly larger bezels match design with ergonomics, leaving enough room to comfortably hold the phone in land without accidentally activating the display. But something that caught me off guard is the slightly smaller bezel on the bottom than the top. It, it bothered me for like five minutes, so it wasn't that bad, but I just wasn't expecting it. I feel like I've danced around the display for long enough, so we're gonna talk about that next. It's not a fantastic display by any means, but it's not as bad as people make it out to be. The blue shift off axis wasn't nearly as bad as I was expecting, honestly, as I tend to hold my phone straight on, as I feel most people will, but I can kind of see why people were annoyed. It didn't bug me at all, but I've been using OLED displays for years now, so I kind of know the characteristics. Technically speaking, the wide QHD PO LED display 
in the 2x1 aspect ratio is all there with boastworthy specifications. In practice, whilst I won't call this a competitor to the iPhone 10 by any means, I did prefer the larger 6 inch size with no notch. It made watching videos and playing games a lot more fun, honestly, and especially the former. I watched a lot more video on this phone than I usually do on the iPhone, which I will say is quite a lot. I do have to mention that I used the boosted colour preset, which is now actually the default colour preset that comes with Android 9 Pie on the Pixel 2 XL, and that's why I think the colours are a little bit better than the standard neutral profile. The large stereo front firing speakers on the device were clear and loud, just as you'd expect, but I like the bass and low end that the hybrid setup on the iPhone 10 offers. They're good speakers, but just not as warm as I'd like. Didn't stop me from using them though, since the headphone portless design made it easier to play out loud than to find and use the dongle every time. And actually, I forgot how much I missed always on displays. And Google's implementation here is fantastic. I found the battery percentage at the bottom of the display particularly useful, since I didn't have to wake up the device to check it. And during the night, I could glance over to the phone to see the time without moving. Love it really do miss that on my iPhone 10. Mentioning battery life, the just over 3,500 mAh battery in the Pixel 2 XL is a nice size and the inclusion of fast charging was actually really handy. As most days I would get a full day's use out of it, there were one or two days, most notably when I was setting up the device or really testing it for review purposes, where it would just fall short of a day and this is quite common on a lot of test phones that I have, so no points lost there, but whilst I would have had enough battery life during the day, I found like topping up, you just have that sense of urgency. You top up just before you leave the house and even for 10 minutes, you gain that much battery life that the quick charging does make a difference. What we are missing, however, is wireless charging, a feature that most 2018 phones have. But that is a trade-off that I'm personally happy with because like I said before, I don't really like the glass back smartphones these days, there's just too many of them. So I'm happy to get a metal back with like a plasticky coating to it instead of having glass and wireless charging. This might be different for a lot of other people though. Also, even though I have plenty of Qi equipped phones, I never use wireless charging anyway, but that's just a personal thing. Then there's the controversial performance and user experience of this thing. But honestly, like what part of the Pixel 2 XL isn't controversial? The numbers are definitely relevant in 2018. A Snapdragon 835, Adreno 540, 4GB of RAM, 64 or 128GB of storage, and of course that Android 9 Pie experience. There are a few omissions, namely expandable storage and higher RAM configurations, but since neither are on the Pixel 3, I guess we can't really bash Google too much for this. My experiences with the phone during everyday use, which I define as browsing through social media and YouTube, Creator Studio, uploading to Instagram, watching the odd 10 minute video and taking photos were very respectable. I not once experienced a crash even though there was the rare hiccup, and even that was only for a couple of seconds. Quickly switching between Chrome and Docs, which are the main multitasking applications I use, was pretty much fine and I never really saw any kind of hiccup on that. Performance numbers in Antutu, Geekbench and Speedtest were respectable, however in Geekbench especially, this thing gets crushed by the iPhone 10 and is dangerously close to the Snapdragon 660 equipped Mi A2 that I checked out recently. This is something that really threw me off guard and I really did have to check it online to make sure I didn't have a dud unit or something, but wow, the 660 is keeping up. Gaming wasn't a fantastic experience for me in 3D titles like Fortnite. For some reason, it just wasn't as good as I was expecting coming from the iPhone 10. I tested some other 3D titles and found a better experience but there was just the occasional lag, and I guess this could be the performance degradation that other users were complaining about, though 2D titles ran like a dream, but that really is to be expected. I can definitely and confidently say that these phones, Pixel 2 XLs, will get better software going down the road, two or three years even. And that is very reassuring, since the very close relative of the 2XL, the LG V30, is, especially my unit, stuck on 7.1.2. I really like the stock software, from the minimalist aesthetic, to smooth animations, to limited bloat, to a better battery life thanks to Doze. Since we get that Android 9.0 Pie on here as of November 2018, we get all of the latest features, apart from the screening which we'll get just slightly down the road. The squeeze to activate Google Assistant was something I only really use for controlling Philips Hue and setting alarms, though I will say it is more accurate than the voice activation in a lot of cases. But one piece of Android 9 that I really didn't like and I really don't like in general is the navigation. The gesture system is actually god awful, like a click for home, but then a swipe for multitasking, but then also a swipe for the app drawer, but then a disappearing and reappearing contextual back button. Seriously Google, what is this? I immediately switched back to the much better button based navigation, 
literally seconds into using the device. Call me when you can compete with Apple's navigation methods because the fact that there's a click but also a swipe just doesn't work. Even OnePlus demolishes this. All right, the cameras, by far the best and most talked about thing when it comes to the Pixel family in general. As you guys know, I love taking photos and videos, so I was really excited to get my hands on this thing. But before the results, I wanna talk about the specifications of the cameras. On the back, we find a single 12.2 megapixel sensor with a 1.4 micron pixel size and an f1.8 optically stabilized lens. Also featured is UHD 30p video, 720p, 240p video, and gyro EIS that combined with the OIS makes for some really unparalleled smoothness in video. And when we flip over to the front, featured above the display is an 8 megapixel sensor with the same 1.4 micron size, but, but this time has an f2.4 aperture lens. It's got the same ability as most to shoot 1080p video also. So the spec sheet isn't looking too padded out, but we all know that the software backbone of Google is what really makes this thing shine. So I have for you a far more padded out collection of images and videos than in most other videos. Dynamic range was fantastic as the HDR Plus enabled camera app can really pull a lot of information from both shadows and highlights, resulting in some of my favorite smartphone photos. And I'd like to say that Google's color science matches my preference perfectly, and I found that the true to life colors gave it a one up on any other phone. Sharpness is there even at 12 megapixels, and low light was also very good. I haven't got the night sight mode on here yet, but these results are impressive nonetheless. All of these were taken with the auto camera app, by the way. Then there's the portrait mode. I've got to say that I was slightly disappointed in the edge detection on objects, but on humans, it did a fantastic job. And I'd call the bokeh effects very convincing. When flipping to portrait mode over on the selfie camera, this is where I found it to be most impressive. It didn't work every single time, but it didn't do a bad job and the high hit rate was way better than the iPhone 10. Results in good lighting conditions were absolutely stunning from an eight megapixel selfie camera. Shifting gears to video for a second, the UHD 4K 30p video was pretty great in all lighting conditions. It wasn't as good as some others in my testing, namely the iPhone 10, but I found focus seeking to be accurate, the stabilization to create smooth footage, and the sharpness and detail to retain information. I found 720p 240 FPS slow motion to be about as useful as a gimmick like phone slow motion needs to be. I mean, if you're producing film in slow motion, you're obviously using a more substantial rig, but for what it's worth, in good light, we get some decent results. It doesn't match Apple's, Sony's, Huawei's, or Samsung's offerings, however. The camera app itself is featureful, with the 2018 iPhone-esque carousel layout, with panorama and portrait modes being added to the standard offerings. In the more category, we find more modes, but also the settings button, which gives more options for RAW and HDR+. I don't mind this app in general, but I prefer the functionality of Huawei's app, even if the aesthetic doesn't match this. A pro mode would have been nice, but as we all know, Google's AI-driven color science and HDR mode really come down to an auto app. As an overall camera package, you're getting a fantastic, fantastic point and shoot camera, arguably the best of its era. You just don't get some of the versatility and other settings that you would get from Samsung or Huawei. So let's round out with some closing thoughts. For 400 pounds used on the likes of eBay, the LG Google Pixel 2 XL is an excellently designed beast of a point and shoot camera smartphone in 2018 going into 2019 with an emphasis on those cameras because realistically in every other category besides the design for me personally, it gets handily beaten by its close competition. Should you still buy the Pixel 2 XL? Yes, but only if you really want it. It's a good phone, don't get me wrong, a really good one, but there are so many better options in terms of an all round device and I feel like Pixels are like Marmite. You either love them or you hate them. Before we end this video, I just want to talk about the big head to head that I'm going to be holding between this, the iPhone 10, and the LG V30 coming into the future. So stay tuned for that and subscribe if you're interested in that. Also, please do like, dislike, comment, subscribe if you're around here to never miss a video like this one. I want to give a massive shout out to my patrons. You guys are fantastic. And I'd also really recommend checking out my social media and joining the Discord to talk in discussions that we have. My name is Ryan Thompson with Tech, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.